Hey y'all, my name is Mick. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd rather just watch the speed paint version, I will put a link in the description and an eye in the sky right now. I'm sure you noticed during those last three sentences that something different is happening with this video. It's a traditional art speed paint. I have mainly been doing digital art since high school, but for the last year now I have been doing more and more traditional art, so I figured it was about time that I share that with you here on this channel. This isn't like most of my traditional art though, because this one's in color and I primarily work in pencil, although in the run up to Inktober I've been experimenting with inks. But I got these copic markers and I finally got the chance to use them. This piece isn't actually related to the topic of the video, but I'm going to explain it anyway because it's so special and different. This is for a mix CD that I made. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I exist solely in the 90s, and I still listen to a lot of music on my portable CD player, but I didn't have a CD player for a while because my old, old, old Discman is broken, and I got a new car that doesn't have a CD player, so I gave my tower of blank CDs to my sister, who was still using the car that we used to share, and after a while I realized that I can't live like this, and I bought a new CD player, and just a few blank CDs, because I didn't think that I'd be making a lot of mixes. I've still got my six or however many volumes of Tasty Tunes. I've got a couple of mixes of some of my favorite artists. I've got just regular CDs that I bought of albums that I like. I'm kind of set for music. Um, but these new CDs, because I bought so few, came in their own individual jewel cases. I've only ever gotten CDs in a tower, so I really wanted to design like some album art and a CD design to make it look really nice because now that I'm set on mixes full of songs that I just really enjoy and want to listen to nonstop, I can get into mixes that are based on moods and have some connecting through line. And that type of thing really lends itself to art, so I used an art style that I don't really use ever and I designed these two little things in the video you'll just see me drawing the CD label on just normal paper, but I did end up redrawing it on CD label paper just because the paper was too thick and it made my CD player make some strange noises. Uh, that label paper was $40 by the way, can you fucking believe this shit? $40 fucking dollars at Office Max for some labels just because no one ever uses them anymore and they can just jack up the price. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> um, so when I made this mix, I was kind of in a funk, by which I mean I wasn't doing well mental health wise, so I wanted to make this mix of songs that are about being sad, but about how it's okay to be sad and things will get better, and also songs that like make me happy or make me want to dance so that I'm in a cheery mood by the time It's Nice to Be Alive rolls around and the playlist is over. And I just wanted these little drawings to reflect that mood, like jumping through the clouds or dancing on top of clouds that are casting those deep shadows and also like the much less subtle sad person v happy person that you can rotate around and see either one right side up. Those, these were really fun pieces to make and design and color and all that. Alright, now onto the main topic of the video, art challenges. I'm specifically talking about weekly or monthly challenges where the challenge is to draw or write every day or something like that. I could do a whole video on challenges where the challenges like draw in the same art medium you usually do but in a different brand or some other such things but that's not this video. This video is talking about Inktober, Huvember, NaNoWriMo, any of the many week-long challenges that exist those sorts of challenges, because today is the first day of Inktober, and I want to talk about my thoughts on it. So I think that maybe I said challenge just then in air quotes, because I think that sometimes the latter group of challenges aren't challenges, but I think that month-long challenges can be considered challenges, because they are challenging to complete. How many times can I say this word? You have to schedule more time out of your day to draw. I think that's the most challenging part, <laughs> but it is hard to stay motivated to complete a piece every day. I just want to establish that I do think that they are a challenge, and I probably shouldn't have sounded so condescending when I said that, 
sorry, not really. I think the other big question surrounding challenges like this is whether or not they help you improve. And I think the answer to that depends on the challenge. For Inktober, I think the answer is yes. It's a medium I think people don't always work in, which means they can learn it throughout the month. Also, while a lot of people do use color in their Inktober pieces, a lot of people just do a black and white thing. This allows for people to learn values. Working in black and white for sure improved my colored work. Because working solely in color, you know, you don't get as great as an understanding of values because there are so many other factors to consider. It's the same thing with Hue Vember. You learn a lot about color theory and you work with colors you don't normally work with. You can for sure learn a lot from that. On the other hand though, not every month-long challenge is a learning experience. Another YouTuber, Holly Brown, created a challenge called the Sketchbook Slam Challenge, which is to complete a 600-page sketchbook in 30 days. That means 20 pages a day. I don't think that this helps you improve all that much, at least in my experience, because I started this challenge and I ended up abandoning it because it wasn't helping me at all, and I made a whole video where I talked about how much I don't like abandoning tasks, so this wasn't like a super easy decision for me to make. The reason I think it wasn't helping me, and the reason I think some challenges improve you and some don't, is that there was so much to do. There's a lot to do with a drawing a day, but it's ridiculous how much time it takes you to draw 20 sketchbook pages. And I found myself intentionally cutting corners and drawing poorly just to save time, and that's not going to help me improve. I improve faster just with my normal pace of drawing. I think that drawing one piece a day is a lot more reasonable, especially because there's nothing saying that it has to be a beautifully rendered piece of art. When I do week-long challenges, I usually do two or three fully rendered pieces, a couple of sampler pieces, and one animation, typically. And that's another great thing about challenges. Because you're drawing every day, you're all but guaranteed to experiment. Until I added it to my commission sheet, basically the only time that I did animation was during, like, midsummer week and stuff. There's not a big chance to do that with a sketchbook slam challenge, just because there's so much. Just so much. You have to work so quickly, and there just isn't enough time. At least, that's how it was for me, because I have school and multiple jobs and art that I do on top of that, and no room in my schedule for all of the extra drawing that is required. With just one drawing a day though, I can space it out so that I do a fully rendered piece once in a while, I do some simpler stuff in between them, and I break that pattern up with something experimental like an animation. It is just spaced out a bit more and it is easier to complete that way. The other question I have written down on here is, are they fun? Hell yeah, they're fun past me! They're buckets of fun! I prefer a week-long challenge to a month-long challenge, but they're both fun. There's a real sense of community in these sorts of challenges that I find lacking in the typical art experience, and that community feeling is present in really big challenges and in tiny fandoms. I've actually already started Inktober at the time of recording this, and I've already felt it, and I've organized some week-long events for the Septimus Heap fandom, which at times has been two dozen people max, with only a few of those participating, but it still winds up being this real come-together experience where everyone just enjoys the art and the writing that's being made. Because so many are participating and they're so accessible and understandable, even people who aren't participating can understand what's happening and enjoy it. I also think it's a great time for inspiration and motivation. There are typically prompts, but there are also so many other people's art to look at and get inspired by and know they enjoy some of the same things you do because you're participating in an event together. And that's really inspiring to me. <laughs> Events like this are also the only time I feel motivated to do a bunch of fully rendered digital paintings without being paid to do them. I typically just do my one fully rendered piece a week for this channel, plus whatever commissions I have, plus maybe plugging away at a color palette challenge, even though those aren't always fully rendered. And that's all the fully rendered art that I do. Any other free art time is used towards sketches, or now it goes towards my comic, but during those challenges I just want to create so badly that I'm willing to find more time and work harder to get those pieces done. So yeah, those are my thoughts on art challenges. I'm sure I'll think of some more and might end up making a follow-up video, but I'd love to hear what y'all think. This is maybe my first opinion video as opposed to art advice or art history, but hey, 
we're mixing up the format in all kinds of ways. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll talk to y'all again soon. Bye!